This is that little Marine Land portrait tank that I did the unboxing here a while ago. Uh, this is where it's going to sit on this little homemade desk in my office. A little light up there. There's a whiteboard up there with, yeah, naturally, our uh, Magic Key magnet for being Magic Key holders, because we are. There's still a couple things I want to do. i got to cut a piece of sponge to go behind that. But water goes behind it up and over through a sponge and then comes out and then uh, the little submersible pump is down there and it runs out of this uh, sprayer. And I'm guessing watching uh, Paul Stingray doing a, a little tank that the one he had, you could also get a spray bar. So, you know, I might, I might look into that, get a spray bar for this instead of that spray. We'll see, we'll see how that works. But that might be an easy adapter. Um, so anyway, I want to cut a piece of sponge to go behind that. And it would be a really coarse sponge. And the idea is to keep shrimp, because that's my intention so far, is to put shrimp in here. And also maybe, uh, I, I'd suggested Ember Tetras, and several people chimed in with Ember Tetras. I really like them. They're really neat little fish. Uh, they stay small. They, they, they're, I love the color on them. Aside from all that, one of the first things I did, I got some spider wood at um, PetSmart, uh, some pieces of this spider wood. And the tank has a really small footprint. So what I ended up doing was cutting the piece off where my thumb is here. This is the piece right here. This one that goes all the way up there. And I glued it on here, used uh, the tissue paper and super glue. And I'm really waiting for Dymax to, to start selling their comp. I think it's called CompuSeal. Uh, it's it's kind of fibrous and it comes in, I think, three different shades. And it absorbs the super glue and then it, it doesn't look like white tissue paper. Now, I may put more super glue over this and put some sand on it uh, just to hide the tissue. Or, or And that's going to go in the back anyway, I think. Um, I could put, you know, a Java fern over it, put a little Anubias over it like that too. And then I cut a piece off of here, right there, and stuck that on right here where I cut that big piece off. So it, it shrank the, the overall dimensions, the width of it, um, front to back, side to side. So, and then I attached this rock. So actually this is gonna be, probably gonna be the front of it now. I don't, I don't know. Or, or kind of a side, we'll see. Uh, and the idea was to, kind of twofold. One, to keep the, the spider wood from floating away. And the other is uh, give it sort of a rock face. And that way I can build rock up around it. Um, and we shall see how that goes. But anyway, there was a big flat surface there that wasn't particularly attractive. So it may, I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna sit in here, we will see. But the next step will be adding substrate. All right, since I want to put shrimp in here, I figured I've got to do something with, with that. And so I put a piece and it's going to be tough to deal with on a regular basis, so hopefully I don't have to. I cut a piece of filter foam to fit and it'll go right against the front of this here and then drop down. What makes it a little tough is there is bar here that that goes down the center I don't know why maybe to hold the that that pad uh, that would go right in here that I don't know carbon pad or whatever it is that I don't plan on using so I've got to put this thing in love all the glare so I put you on the tripod so we can do this so I've got to kind of hold this in place get it over that past that little piece of plastic that sticks out and follow it down with my fingers so it doesn't ride up. And I think that's okay. Now we gotta see if we can see if the sponge goes all the way down and it does not because it got hung up. So I've got the long pair of aquascaping tweezers. So I'm gonna push it down, try and get in the center of it and probably keep the light on. Push it all the way down and then pull it back up to cover it. And I know this is a giant pain in the butt, but that covers the entire hole there. So that ideally should keep little shrimp out. Now what I'm gonna do is fill it with water 
and see if the flow is all right. All right, well, flow seems good with that sponge in there. I was concerned that it would restrict the flow. Maybe it is a little bit. And I think I've got the pump set to maximum. So I may pull that out and set it to minimum because I don't know if I want this much flow. There's two lines in the back here and I'm sure you can't see them from where you are. So let's see if we can fix that. Uh, yeah, here they are. So there's a minimum uh, capacity line and a maximum capacity line. I've got it set to the minimum right now. Maximum would take it into this area as well. And that would be a great place for little shrimpies to escape into the back of a uh, filter box here. So we will keep this at minimum. And I don't know how much this will turn down. Doesn't look like much, but I don't need a lot of flow for the shrimp. So this should be good. It looks pretty good. I just and, and also this, this is doubling as a leak test right now. So far so good. Let's see, wherever the seams are. Under the back, because we've got, we're joining two different materials here. At least I think, oh, maybe not. It's all glass and there's some sort of wrap on the glass. This is new to me. I've never had a tank like this. So there's some sort of a wrap on the back of the glass that follows down right there, uh, right about in line with the filter box separation. Pretty cool. Well, this is what I'm going to use to set this thing up. Um, there is the completed little tree. Now, the only adjustments I might make will be maybe adding more little root looking things around the rock. We'll see. <laughs> Ice scrapers. You know, actually, this one's a putty knife uh, from the home center. I think this one was an ice scraper. Uh, it might be a putty knife, too. Doesn't matter. They're cheap. They work well. And you can use the big, fancy, long stainless steel ones if you want. Just a cheap uh, paintbrush for if I need it to move small amounts of substrate around or super glue. I've got about, I think, about three tabs of API root tabs in here that I've put in a mortar and pestle and ground them up. That'll sprinkle on the substrate. I have some chunks of slate I bought on Amazon, actually. Uh, slate should break easily and also maybe even split easily. And I think that's what I'm going to use. I'm not sure. I've got another rock out there, too, that I might use. So in addition to that piece of coarse sponge that I put behind this hole to keep little fish and shrimpies out, I also am going to add a piece of this uh, polyfiber stuff. I cut down to fit. And I think I'm going to put the finer side facing the flow going in. It's got a tighter, here we go, the finer, the looser side, I'm sorry. And it's got a tighter, finer side on, on the other side of this stuff. Um, so I just slide that down there. Should go all the way down. And hide in the back there. And hopefully that will also help clean the water as it goes through. And then I can just pull that out and rinse it real easily. So this is where I'll start putting in some used substrate. There's some gravel in it, little bits of volcanic uh, gravel. There is fluval stratum, aqua soil. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that down there and I'll pick out any of the bigger pieces of volcanic gravel. I just don't want them to get in the way. They might, they might not, but just in case, because I'm going to build up kind of a retaining wall out of slate. It's this cool dark gray. I think I'll put just a little bit more in. We use this handy little scraper just to get this back a little bit. And I'm going to put... Um, I think Sagittarius, the dwarf Sag across the front. And then those couple of API root tabs, I'm just going to sprinkle this across the bottom just lightly. Since I'm right handed, I'm kind of high up here. I feel like I'm a chef cooking where they 
always seem to throw the spices from about three feet away. All right. I got a little bit left here. I think that's probably... I think I got a pretty good even level. And then just a, a very light uh, dusting of that pond soil. And apparently this has most of the organic material sifted off, burned off, however they do it. And this will put another layer of nutrients in here. And I guess as this does break down, it'll add some carbon dioxide from what I was seeing uh, empty fish tanks saying. And I trust him. He was one of the first channels I stumbled across when I uh, decided I was going to get back into fish keeping. And he's, his channel is really focused on aquascaping. Well, I think that's plenty. Usually I'm a fan of anything worth doing is worth overdoing, but I don't think that's the case here. Now, I want to get a start with that pool sand. Starting in the front, so the weight of it doesn't push down anything from the rear. And we'll work our way up towards the back. And I can see just a little bit of the uh, that substrate. So I'm going to use a scraper and just push down. I know you can't see that. I'm just pushing down because I can see just a little bit of the substrate right here. So I'm just going to use this scraper and just push down a little bit. And it'll just push some sand in front of it and hide that. That way it's not in view. And it's more of a homogeneous mess, uh, mass. And again, this is just pool filter sand. I got it from one of the local retail pool supply places, places that sell all the chemicals and equipment and everything. They're not the cheapest. Might be able to get it cheaper at a home center. I've heard both. I've heard people say yes to that, and I've heard other people say they couldn't find it at the home center. What I'm pretty certain of, most of the home centers for, for pool supply stuff, uh, it's usually out in the garden center. Not It's not going to be in, in uh, uh, the building materials where you're going to find, uh, you know, builder sand, the regular brown sand. I like this. It, it is more expensive, but what I like about it is I don't have to wash it. it it's a done deal. I don't know what that is. A little piece of some uh, other kind of rock or something. Oh, it's, yeah, I know what that is. It's from uh, those other little chips of rock I think I was showing you. So how's that look so far? Pretty good. And then I'm going to take that little tree that uh, hopefully you saw me build. And I'm going to stick that in. Feels really nice and solid now. And this is going to be the fun part because it's going to be a tight fit. So what I'm going to want to do, use some of that slate and chips to build up a little retaining wall. So I'm going to have to bust some of those pieces up, I'm pretty sure. We'll put the light on it and see what it looks like. Oh, not blue. There we go, the white. That looks kind of neat. So now to start playing with the slate. All right, I just dropped a piece of slate in there, figuratively. And I didn't uh, record that because I didn't want you to see me drop it in there literally, just in case. So anyway, that and it sits under this rock. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to start... Breaking up the pieces of slate, they're all considerably larger. I use smaller chips and work my way up on both sides. And once I break up pieces, then I'll, I'll you don't need to see that. I'm just going to use a hammer and try and split them up into smaller pieces. And then I'll uh, put you back on when I start placing them in. And some of them I might, um, might glue in, and hopefully they'll just dry stack. There's not going to be anything big in here. And if I need some more sand in the front, I've got a little overhang right under this ledge. And if I need more, we'll see. So maybe you would like to see how I'm going to do this. So I've got a hammer, my hand, and I'm using the edge of the hammer instead of the whole flat. I should be able to bust these up relatively easily. Slate is not terribly hard. Oh, you know what? These kind of chips are going to come in handy too. There we go. There we go. So those are all going to come in handy. Got to be careful. It is sharp. Yeah, a glove would be nice. How about a towel? There we are. 
couple more nice pieces. And all the little flakes, I might just drop down in the front for a little bit of accent. And I'm betting we can take this layer off just by hitting it right here on this edge. Oh, yeah, we got it like that. And then thinner pieces will be easier to build that little retaining wall. So that broke up into some nice little pieces. Now let's see what we got and see what we can come up with as far as the dry stack goes. And if we need to glue things, same way, tissue paper and uh, super glue. And again, don't do what I did. Don't glue your fingers together. So anyway, this is what we got. Kind of nice. And this is where the puzzle part starts. And I think I'm going to pour a little more sand in front just to hold things in place. And I will use the brush this time. So I'm going to have to get some of that out of there and put it in the back. It's really tight fit. My hands are a little, a little big for such an operation. Yeah, so a little at a time. And I'm certain that a little smaller container in here would would help. And I guess I can just push it up onto this piece of slate, get it started. Don't want to move my tree too much. And then use the brush to clean it off of that. And if I need to, I'll go get a spoon out of the kitchen or something to shovel it out of there. That may actually be a pretty good idea. Just pushing it between those stones, kind of help anchor them a little bit. Any of these little sharp pieces are hanging out here. Break it off either by hand or with a good old hammer. Oh, I like that. Then I've got a piece of Christmas moss I think I'm going to try and attach to a piece of this slate somewhere. Maybe, maybe that rock in the front under the tree and let it grow over the rock and kind of hide that area where the rock and the tree are connected. Oh, I know I can use some more sand back there. Push more sand back in there, underneath that. That'll help stabilize that a little bit. And I did look to see if Marine Land made spray bars. They do make a spray bar that's been discontinued. Let me rephrase that then. They did make a spray bar that's been discontinued. I'm gonna call that on this side. And maybe just drop a little sand right along the edge there to help lock it in. And I just wanna go back a little more on this side. I don't really want to get too fiddly. There's more sand behind the tree there. There's kind of a big gap. So truth is, I've never done anything like this. I'm sure you can tell. Let's pour just a little bit more against the glass on this side. Hopefully it'll help lock in the... And I'm going to pour some more right down, try and get it right in here between the big rock and the slate. And I'm gonna do it from way up here and I'll, I'll broom it in and it's scattering everywhere except where I want it. There we go, that's full. And again, I, th I'm, I think, I hope, after it gets wet, that will help to uh, stabilize this whole thing. So I know somebody's gonna say, well, so I'll say it for you. Cause now I'm thinking that's slate and this big rock don't really go together. But, you know, I know I've seen stuff like that in nature where you got some big boulder amongst other kinds of boulders or rocks. And I think in geological terms, they call it an erratic. Not sure. If it's not, I just made it up. What do you think? All right. So the next step, since these are all going to be rooted plants or sag, maybe a crypt or two, all right, since I do what I often do, and that's put the cart in front of the horse, I realized that uh, I needed to plant the epiphytes on the wood. So I drained the water back out of the tank into this five gallon bucket. And then I went and rescued a bunch of plants that are gonna go in here. And what I've got are some Java fern, the window love with these uh, little uh, split leaf tips. I like that one, that's kind of cool. And I've got some in another tank. It seems to stay more compact, I'm not sure. We'll see. And then I've got this other Java fern that I might not use because it's the bigger stuff. 
um, and a bunch of little crypts, also rescues. They've been floating in another tank, so they're a little curled on themselves. They might be a little hard to use, but I'm going to give them a shot because uh, the, the roots, having been laying flat on the surface of the water, they sort of rolled over on themselves, but they'll be, if I can't use them here, I'll go get some more out of another tank and I'll plant these and get them straightened out. And then Dwarf Sagittaria, rescued out of a, my 75 gallon. And a couple chunks of uh, Busa philandra, not a clue what species. Seems to me it was really bronzy once and maybe that was more light. And then also a little uh, struggling rescue uh, Anubius. And then some Savasatang, 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 that stuff. So there's still some water in the tank, enough to uh, anchor some of these little plants. And you can see what I mean, how the, the stem is curved a little bit. But I think that'll be all right. And I think this one of the bronze, a red uh, Cryptwendii. I think I've got a green one in here. And you can see this one has stolen. These spread by runners quite well. And you can see, I hope, that little, that's a new little plant right there. By my finger focus, there we are. And then there's another one. I'm going to roll it over here behind this root. Another one right there behind my th or in front of my thumb. And I'm going to leave that part on the surface if I can. You know what? That's not going to happen. I'm going to, uh, it'll, it'll roll back up to the surface. And I think I'll be able to just uh, take advantage of that. And it will make more. Because these crypts, once they get established, they spread. Don't usually bury the crown of plants, but kind of have to there. And the crown's the point where the roots and the shoots come together. And this one's also got a, a little runner on it. And they're all pretty well curled from just floating on top of another tank for the last, God, I don't know, maybe a couple of months. I did a video on harvesting all these crypts out. You may want to go check that out. I talk about using the gel super glue to glue plants to wood or rock. And this says just super glue, not gel, but it seems to be a really high viscosity. So I wonder if they didn't actually mismark it. You can see, I think you can see just how thick that is. It should be running. It is not. Hopefully that'll hold it there. I'm going to use this bigger piece of window love. I really like this. I like the look when it's doing well. And I think I'm just going to put it right here. And I could probably tuck it there, but I think just because put a little dollop of super glue there and then stick it in there and that should hold it. Yeah. And I got a couple more. My wife mentioned that that stem was high enough that I won't be able to get the lid on. So a pair of loppers, long handled pruners in they came and down it went because I do want to keep the lid on it, especially if I put that bed in it for now. They can be jumpers. There's another piece of crypt. I'm just going to load it up back there until I can. And there we are. That's that. Let's see what it looks like with the light on. All right, so I guess we're going to put that water back in the tank now. Put that plastic bag back in the tank. I guess if it goes up into those slots, that's probably all right. That might be an issue once they're shrimping here, though. Let's dose this. That's fresh water. So tap water, API tap water conditioner. It says leaf zone, but I, I bought uh, two bottles on Amazon. They both leaked. They both got dropped and the bottoms were pinched. So just a little bit of that. So I poured them into, I had one of these empty. The other one I just sort of used up. And then a little bit of CO2 boost. And this is where I go back to anything worth doing is worth overdoing. All to get those plants kind of a kickstart. Don't forget to shake your, your chemicals when you're using those. Because sometimes there's sediments. Sea chem flourish potassium. Because the java ferns, I've, I've had some problems, and you, you've probably seen those videos, uh, with the perforations in the leaves of the java ferns, anubias, and some crypts. And here's that quick start. And that's a, a, a bacterial uh, inoculation to get it started. I got this from Greg Sage's uh, uh, Select Aquatics. It's his fertilizer. You mix one, it comes in a, a, a Ziploc bag, and I think it's about a pound, and it goes a long ways. One and a half teaspoons per gallon of water, and then one and a half ounces per, uh, that's not right. Um, I think it's per 30 gallons. 
So I'm just going to pour a little bit into this. Oh, I knocked you around a little bit into this measuring cup. And that's probably plenty for this tank. And do that, oh, I don't know, maybe every couple weeks, weekly maybe. It is all about plant growth. There are little bits and pieces floating around that will eventually settle out or get sucked up into the back there. They won't go very far because I got that black sponge in there. That'll keep them from going all the way back, which I guess that's a trade-off. And there's something floating around in there. It's like a piece of Swasatang. So I'll just re-anchor that somewhere. I think it came from here. Maybe there's two of them floating around because I think the other one that was back there, they'll settle. I thought I'd do a water parameters test. Uh, I haven't done that yet. Uh, the tank has been set up and running since the 25th. Fifth, today's the 30th and let's see it was really kind of cloudy for the first day and a half two days that's cleared up and then it, the tannins are leaching out of this piece of spider wood spider wood's really darkened and i kind of like the color of it now all the plants seem to be doing all right if we look at the test chart here it's seven five seven six and it always is and if i used a high ph it probably might even go a little higher the ammonia there seems to be a little bit of ammonia in here somewhere maybe between 0.25 and 0.5 parts per million about 0.25 parts per million nitrite and nitrate is a little high about 10 parts per million which actually is about right out of the tap here this all this well not all this water most all this water came from uh, the tank here with uh, little bitty Mickey Mouse platies and little Corys and uh, green jade shrimp. About, oh, I had about two thirds, and then the last third was fresh tap water. I also added a little bit of the uh, API, uh, oh, I forget what they call it. it. It's the live bacteria, it's a uh, starter. Well, as you can probably see, I took out about two thirds of the water. I added a couple extra little pieces of Sagittarius subulata down below, and I found another little crypt. So I stuck those in. I'm filling this just with a little two cup at a time. I put a produce bag in there to buffer any of the impact of the water because I don't want to disturb the sand. Uproot plants. Hard enough to get the plants and little bits of rock in here with that tree trunk I made because my hand's just too big and I see that thing's moving a little bit. So I'm going to have to shore it up from behind after I get this filled. So that's it. And it's all ready to go. Now all I got to do is plug it back in. I'll I'll test the water again. We'll see how that goes. And you can also start to see on the edge of the, the tree trunk right there, some of the bio slime growing, you know, cause this is new wood. You can see it growing up there, the white right there, some right there underneath here. And that'll eventually go away. I might put a, I've got some auto sinkless, but I think they'll go for that too. So that'll help, uh, help clean that up. And then I also uh, added just a tad more of the uh, tap water conditioner and I put a little bit more quick start, another mill or so of quick start in here. And here's a quick retest. I used the higher pH this time and it's somewhere between 7.4 and 7.8. So it's not going to change. It's always that high, even in the tanks with lots of plants and lots of wood, whatever. It just, it stays the same. And then the ammonia, uh, really non-existent. So that's good. I also put a thermometer on this. I thought that might be a good idea. And right now it's hanging about 76 degrees, which is okie doke. Probably about what the tanks are in the garage where that male betta is gonna come from. And the autosynclus if I can catch some. All right, so I'm floating a betta. This is he, I don't know if you can see that through there. He's spinning around with it. This is from one of my, my first spawn of bettas. So I'm gonna just dump him in water and all because he's the only one in here so far. There he goes. And then I'll take you off the tripod. Now and I put the lid on too. He is pretty. I don't think I realized just how pretty he is. I haven't seen him all by himself. He was in one of those 41 quart, six inch deep, eight inch deep, under the bed white plastic tubs. I uh, had big surface area because so this is gonna be a big change to him. I'm going to keep a close eye on him. And if he doesn't look like he's working out in here, he's going to go back in that tub where he was full of guppy grass, full of guppies, shrimp, lots of places to hide and hang out and perch on stuff. He's just exploring things now. He is beautiful, I think. Really a pretty fish. Oh, now he's caught in that stream, but he seems to be okay. And I'll feed him some blood worms later today. Let him just sort of explore for now. I put a little bit of hornwort in here and that'll thicken up on the top. It'll it'll diffuse some of the light. In fact, speaking of which, let's put the light down because I forgot. He gets caught in that downdraft. 
I really gotta come up with another way for that. Maybe I can just twist that up. I have a hard time with this lid getting my fingers in there. Last thing I wanna do is drop it in. It scares me a little bit. So if I put this sort of up, yeah, it doesn't push him straight down. In fact, he's got a little current to swim in. So there we are. I think we can call this video a wrap finally. So that was the whole build of this tank. And the preliminary videos for this build were the unboxing of this Marine Land portrait. It's about a five gallon. And then how I built this Franken tree. Check those videos out too and see the whole process. Like I always say, thanks for looking.